I get to get in bed with you. Exciting. This is the casserole dish, and I'm Garrett Swan, and I'm here with the the infamous, very, very talented Michael Mays. Am I talking to you in the camera? You can talk to me. Hello, Garrett Swan. <laughs> Hello, Michael Mays. And who are you playing in the movie? I'm playing Max Million Beat'em. 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 As in, um... Is this kind of like a wedding march? As in, like, beatneck. Beat'em. Beat'em. <laughs> You're kind of hip and cool like that. I'm a little hip and cool. Yeah. I'm a little square as well. Are you? Why? <laughs> I don't have that much experience with the pleasures of life. Oh, come on. So, but, so, here's, anyway. let me ask this. Are you, do you cook? Are you talking to Maximilian Beatum or Michael no. Mays? In Michael Mays. Uh, I do. I do some cooking. Okay. And what is he putting you... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what do you... I know I'm very difficult I, interviewing. I, I, uh, yes, I do. Okay, what do you cook? Um, What's your dish especial? I bake a lot. I'm a better baker than I am a baker. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Um, like what? Well, I have infamous chocolate chip cookies that I can make. And I've started eating unrefined sugar in my life, so I've started making things with all unrefined sugar, which is fun. Cool. But I, uh, I, and I have kind of stopped baking because of P90X, which I've been doing. Uh, but as far as I cooking, can tell you're in shape, because you're looking pretty studly there. Yes, I yeah. am. Especially because you have a yeah. yeah! Hit it! <laughs> um, <laughs> Cut up! But I make a lot of fish. I can make a good salmon. And, um, I just, I'm from the Midwest, from Milwaukee, so right. I kind of just make the basics. Well, did you, like, learn from your parents, or...? or? I did, yes. We used to make a tuna casserole. Did you? Which was Kraft macaroni and cheese, a can of yellow fin bumblebee tuna, <laughs> and a can of cream of mushroom soup mixed yeah. all together. Ew. And then stuck in the oven for a while. I used to love it. It kind of tastes like really disgusting, but really good at the same time. Yeah. Although I haven't had it forever, but yes, I used and, to love it. And it will clog your arteries as, as well. Do you find that, um, does <laughs> cooking relax you when you do it? No, it makes me very tense, actually. <laughs> does it really? I was just telling someone that yesterday, because of, I cooked the dinner for, um, us here. I don't know if that's on disclosed information. Yeah. But, um, no, that's a reason that I don't like cooking, actually, is because I feel like it makes me tense, because there's too many things to do at once. Like too many elements? Yeah, and so I'm worried about that, and this, and this, and that, and then and trying to clean at the same time, and, and so I end up just getting tense, and I feel like it takes a lot of time for what usually ends up, like, tasting like it really took no time, so. Right, right. So if you were um, a recipe, right? Michael Mays is a recipe, like in in cups in like measurements, like cups and and uh, teaspoons, tablespoons, and stuff. Like yes. I'm one cup of love, I'm three cups of da da da. How would you? How, what would the recipe call for for Michael Mays? Really? Yes, really. <laughs> but first, I'm gonna make sure that you're in shock because I feel like you link back. I know you're, yeah, I'm just going to move this over a bit, if you're going to sit like that. There we go. Um, yes, really. <coughs> uh, yeah. And be honest. <laughs> I'm joking. You can lie through your teeth if you want to. No, but really, what, what is your recipe? Like, what, what makes Michael Mays a dish? I would say, um, like four cups of complexity, okay. um, one cup of love, two cups of spirituality, or exploration of the spiritual universe. It's a pretty large ingredient. Wow, that's that's pretty heavy. 
Wait, that's a heated dish. That is a heated dish. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not done yet. I think, I think it'll explode on itself or heat it up yeah, itself. Yeah, maybe like one <laughs> cup of anger. No, 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 no. Like a quarter cup of anger. Or a dash of anger. An eighth a cup. Okay. <laughs> now, have you, I know this is the most random question, but have you ever had sex in the kitchen? As I like scan through my brain. I'm sure I have. I can't recall at the moment, but I'm sure I have. When you were cooking, right? Was it fun? Do, do you find like food, like, oh, when, no, let me ask. Yes. It was? Yeah. When you recall? Now, do you, do you feel like um, food is some sort of, do, do you feel that, like it's exotic in any way, or does it does it bring feelings on? So you, you're saying that it brings you on more stress. Cooking does. Cooking. I'm eating, I love eating. Okay. And it usually relaxes me when I eat. Um, are you a food snob? No, but I know many of my friends are. <laughs> so they No, I pretty much can like... I can pretty much go to any restaurant and and be happy with something on the menu. I'm a little yeah. picky because I've like... have a regiment of eating now. But um... I do love dessert. And I love dark chocolate. So when mm. we're talking about feelings associated with food, Right. Sugar and sweets and chocolate can definitely um, expel immense pleasure. Really? Yes. Cool. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to turn the corner here a little bit, but you know, um, what do you think? What do you think is wrong with relationships today? I know it's like a general question, but what do you think is like wrong? Where people are doing wrong in their relationships? Like marriages, mostly. Well, I don't know if it's a wrong or right thing, because I think it's just a learned behavior of where we're at right now. But I think a major thing is that we take far too much for granted, mm -hmm. especially being American. I think we're given way too much. And now we're given even more through computers and through digital worlds where we can basically access anything at any time. Right. So therefore I think a lot of times we don't see what's in front of us and we're constantly wanting something else. Mm. Bigger or better or more or whatever it is um, than what we have. As opposed to accepting, fully accepting what's in front of us and nurturing it. Making compromises, per se. Mm -hmm. And acknowledging. Yeah, yeah. Taking advantage of what you have. So, if a, if, if a relationship was on the rocks, per se, would you do, you... do you believe in... Do you believe that they should work it out? Someone should work it out? Or should they separate? <clears throat> and separate for a while? Or do you think they should just call it quits? Well, I think of oh, the above. I think that... Personally, I, I don't think you should just call it quits right away. I think that right. you should explore many different levels of what's going on and, mm -hmm. and, um, and different ways to explore that and, and different ways to allow the other person to be or what they need and really explore what they need, possibly. Right. Um, or to give it a break. Or if all those don't work, then to call it quits, right. as opposed to just right. settling. Right. So what, what do you consider the ideal relationship? Well, Garrett, it's a very complex question. Yeah, I'm giving you complex. <laughs> from a, a complex question for a complex human being. It's a hard answer for me because I feel like what I feel an ideal relationship is I feel like that's been combated as of late with the societal norm that I've been raised in to think of what an ideal relationship is. Right. So I think that um, those things are changing for me now and it's not so black and white as mm -hmm. what I thought it was. Right. Um, and I've actually, you know, a lot of that stuff has come up during the shoot because all those things are being explored, so right, right. lots of conversations we've been having with cast members and stuff, but right. we've talked about that specific thing. And a lot of times, you know, um, 
you hit all those check marks and then mm -hmm. you still need more, want more. Or... Right. So, right. I th but I guess for me, the ideal relationship would simply be the ability to trust and allow the other person to grow and to grow together huh. within that. I like that. Excellent. What's the best lie you've ever told? Um, hmm. Make it a good one. <sighs> well, I've told, I used to tell lots of white lies in my like late teens because I was afraid of conflict. And as an adult? I don't really lie anymore. I told a lie in um, high school once when I was cast in the play The Crucible. Yeah. And I was cast as an understudy. And I just, first of all, I thought the play was so boring when I read it as a junior year. And then I was an understudy and I just really didn't want to be in it. And so I told the theater director that my dad had a heart attack. Which I, at the time, I don't think was a very nice thing to do. So I got <laughs> out of the play. It's a hardcore lie. I know, it is. How mean. It was very mean. Because that, that, that goes along the lines of what's the meanest thing you ever told. <laughs> you answered two questions in one. That's amazing. But I thought that was pretty mean, I know. Wow. But I felt very guilty. So then I think she found out or something like that. Mm. Mm. Um, if you were a bottle or a, if you were a type of liquor... Hard, uh, hard liquor. Patron. You'd be Patron. Silver Patron. Why is that? Because it's spicy and hardcore and smooth at the same time. Fantastic. Well, that's all I needed. You're Brilliant. A good, you're a good disher. Well, thanks. It was very nice meeting you. What? Nice meeting you, too. Good luck in the circus. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> and that's it. What's it? Are we going to shoot that scene in the shower now? Yeah.